All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Woods, and I am the Group Vice President at Neighborly Brands. And I actually have Alyssa Hernandez, who is our VP of Franchise Sales, Resales uh, for Neighborly, and we're glad to talk a little bit about Neighborly. So uh, Neighborly, we are the largest franchisor of home services. Uh, we have over 19 franchise concepts in the United States, over 32 brands around the world. We have over 5,500 franchise locations, right? Over 12 million customers that use our franchise services on a daily basis or on an annual basis. And at the end of 2023, we actually reached 4 billion in system-wide sales. So here's just a visual of all the different 19 concepts that we have. So not to get confused, this is not like an Angie's list where you come in and you have access to every one of these services. Every one of these businesses is a, their own individual franchise concept for you to develop. Right, we have things such as HVAC, plumbing, um, home cleaning, painting, restoration, um, lawn care, right? You name it, we got it, right? And the idea is that you have the opportunity to select what franchise concept you want to grow in. So if you click again, so our strategic uh, plank says we want to grow you, right? So as a franchise partner, what we want to do is make sure that you have the opportunity to grow. You have the opportunity to grow with just the franchise concept that you're in. So as you're developing, right, we'll give you the opportunity to acquire more territory and build that one brand. But what we're starting to see is that a lot of franchise partners are starting to diversify and add more franchise concepts to their portfolio. So about five to seven percent of all of our franchise partners own more than one brand. Right. And the way you grow that is either through two ways. Right. We have the novel opportunities, but more importantly, we have a lot of resales. And we have had a lot of interest in private equity groups and investment groups coming in, starting with resales and then building with the novo opportunities around those resales. The second is fill in the white space. So white space is just simply all the great available territory that we have to develop. So the more opportunities we have to develop in those white spaces, we're actually increasing our overall market share. Next is activate the neighborly hub, right? So neighborly hub is really key for neighborly because it gives every franchise owner the opportunity to work with all other franchise partners in that market. So if you are a, a house master franchise owner in Queens, the Lawn Pride concept in Queens, the Mr. Rooter in Queens, you guys will work together and have cross-marketing opportunities, right? You have the opportunity to share customer lists. So imagine coming in as a franchise partner and having customer lists for all the other neighborly brands in your territory. So you get that opportunity to work as a hub and actually find ways to develop referral programs to help bolster all of the business opportunities in, within that territory. And then next is accelerate growth. So the original growth is for our partners. We actually want to grow as a franchisor, right? We are super aggressive in the acquisition market. So we're always looking for other acquisition targets from a franchising perspective to help provide more opportunities that we have up here. And the last is just expanding internationally. So again, we have 12 to 13 brands internationally, but obviously our main focus is in the United States as well as Canada. So quickly, I just wanna talk about the home services space, right, and why this is such an attractive uh, market to be in. I mean, this is really one of the most recession resistant industries that you can see, right? As you can see, almost two thirds of all homeowners have contracted out at least one home project over the last year. So that means that's a lot of opportunities for home services contractors. And then some of the other trends that are very positive is the average home in the, in the United States continues to rise, right? The average age of a home in the United States is around 42 years old. And if you were to take that regionally, like in the Northeast, it's closer to 45 to 50 years old. So that means there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of home services to be done from renovations, from repairs, et cetera. Next, you have this transition from do it yourself to do it for me, right? There was a time when people would get on YouTube and learn how to fix their own faucet and learn how to fix things around the house. Now, a lot of people are actually wanting to take that time back and go do something a little bit more enjoyable. So they're calling people to do those services for them. And when I look at that, right, there's two kind of spectrums when it comes to homeowners, right? When you look on one side of the spectrum, you have baby boomers, right, who may not have the physical capability to be able to do some of these things around the home. And then when you also look on the other side, you look at millennials who are the, the biggest driver of home services or home purchases now, they just don't have the expertise, right? So some of the data we get, we found that only one in four millennials knows the difference between a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver, right? <laughs> so with that being said, there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for us to be able to do services. Um, next is population, right? The population continues to increase 
over the years, right? And then there was a study that, what's that? Five minutes? Yeah. Okay, we got 10 total. Yep. Um, so yeah, so basically I was saying you're gonna need about 10 million homes to accommodate the uh, increase in population. And then lastly, home ownership continues to, to rise. So again, these are all good reasons why the home services space is very attractive.